Charity. So does religion promote war or peace? Jagraj Singh joins us, who used to be in the British Army. Now he video blogs about Sikhism. Welcome to the programme. Thanks thank very you much, so much for being here. I just want to pick up that point about religion being hijacked. Yasmin, do you think the Archbishop has a point when he says that? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think I went to mosque two weeks ago and I have never heard, I, I belong to a Shia community and we're very liberal and so on. I've never heard so many people come up to me and say, will we survive? These guys are absolutely slaughtering everything that's good about Islam and hate other religions. So I think we are in a bad place with religion at the moment. Hard to justify it. Yeah. And Jagrad, uh, you were a former soldier, as we said, in, in the British Army, and you're a, a practicing Sikh. Uh, I wonder sometimes whether those two conflict, whether whether the religion and mm. and war right. push up against one <coughs> they don't, another. They don't in which conflict case, in terms do, of. Um, where do your loyalties lie? Well, in lo in terms of loyalties, obviously the loyalties of a person are to the to the to the country as a soldier. Um, I often thought about this. What if the you know every everybody has a. Uh, people, many people could, uh, dissented from going to war because they felt that that wasn't right. Um, I guess when a uh, government decides to go to war, um, they obviously make decisions, but they are still bound to certain conventions, the Geneva Convention, for example. Um, and every soldier is taught that you cannot um, actually carry out an illegal order which conflicts with the Geneva Convention. So that always reassured me because I think, you know, that was a convention that I could sign up to. So you have to make your own judgment. It's not just clear from outside um, that you must do exactly what the officer says. Um, well, actually, I was the officer, so uh, I, so I wasn't able to give illegal orders. The fact was that you had to always uh, make a judgment, and you were a moral agent at all times. So but, the but conflict did you find doesn't come the up as But the morality of your religion sometimes conflicting with the morality of your job? Uh, not, my, not in my case. Yeah. Um, I, I think Sikhs are quite blessed in the sense that our, our faith is very uh, you know, progressive. It's very much about respecting other people um, and everybody's rights. Now, obviously, there are times where soldiers have carried out questionable acts, um, and then the, the, and, but that has been dealt with in the British Army. And I felt the British Army is a place where actually um, you are able to confront certain things that could, in, in, in other places, in other countries, or any of the other governments, they're kind of brushed aside and just say, let's not discuss about that. But actually, the British government's been quite um, rigid about um, making sure that the laws are followed. So I was very happy in the British Army. And I think British values are you know, very enlightened values. They go in line with Sikhism. Hmm. Sikhs um, should join the army. Obviously, on a personal uh, level, there are situations like you're far away from your family, but that, every soldier faces that. But I think uh, for a faith community, it's harder, um, but it doesn't conflict in terms of values. All right. Thanks very much for that. Um, Owen, you are uh, an atheist. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, do you think that, that religion is, is a force for good and that, that both sort of religion and, for example, what Jagi does, does really sits comfortably or in the case of what we've been seeing with the Islamic State, is it, is it hijacked? Well, it has been hijacked in that sense. And, you know, it's interesting that many of the British jihadis who've been going abroad to Syria, what did they order on Amazon before they went over? Islam for dummies is what they, uh, they ordered, which shows their knowledge of Islam is fairly limited, to say the least. The, the point I'd make is religion isn't automatically a force for good or a force for bad. Mm -hmm. It's been used to justify anything and it's been used if I think of Christianity to justify socialism and I've got ancestors who are proud Methodists and socialists it was used to justify right-wing dictatorships like General Franco in Spain mm -hmm. and what happens is people pick and choose bits of religion take it out of context maybe or focus on particular areas to justify their own preconceived ideas for me the important thing as a secularist is that the state just keeps out its nose out of the affairs of religion and religion keeps its nose Can out it of the that, affairs though? of the state. Can it keep its nose out of religion when there are acts of atrocities which are being carried out, That's James, in the matter. name of religion? Yes. Well, uh, um, you have to rephrase that question. What, what, what exactly are you asking me? Well, it's about the... If we're looking at the Islamic State, for example, the reason why people are sticking their nose in is because the Islamic well, no, 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 State no, 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 is sorry. using... So, I, ju I just mean we shouldn't have an established church, for example. I'm saying we should keep the state mm. and organised religion as separate identities and respect each other's different religious beliefs but not mm. allow religion to intrude 
on the state sphere in order to protect everybody's rights, believers and non-believers. I'm not saying obviously, but in the case of yeah, the Islamic State, we don't need action. State obviously, state religion. Religion. We, I think of some sort. I think we're in danger. We're all in danger of agreeing with each other. This is the problem. I think this is why I was so shocked. I was agreeing with Owen Jones. That, that let's not make a habit of this, Jones. No, I know <laughs> it's very worrying. But if you look at the the great wars in history, for example. Uh, you, you see that, or, or, or the great cataclysms caused by humans, Mao's famine, which, which caused 50 million deaths, perhaps, that wasn't about religion. Uh, the Taiping Rebellion was about religion, and that killed about the same number of people. Yeah. I'd say that irreligion kills as many people as religion does. It's, 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 it's become bad fashionable post-Richard Dawkins to say, yes, religion causes wars, that's why we must ban religions. I don't buy that line. Mm. I think, you know, some religions are good, some religions are bad, some religions get perverted. I think what we're seeing going on in, in northern Iraq right now is clearly bad religion in action. Okay. Yeah, I think pe people can be relig pe good, uh, religious people can be good or bad. And I think what the, we shouldn't be scared of is actually confronting people who are religious but are doing the wrong thing. I, I, when, you stop, when you start feeling that, oh, I don't want to confront this person because they might get offended about, about me criticising their religion, mm. well, that's when we have problems like what we have now, where actually this should have been nipped in the bud a long time ago. But let's but not forget, most find... Muslims look at Islamic State and are as disgusted yeah, as anybody okay. else watching this We're program. going to head back and join Bobby Friction at the London Mellor. What are people saying there, Bobby? Bahi Guru, Bahi Guru, Bahi Guru. 